Welcome back to Miscellaneous Important Stuff. Today, my friend Troy came on the show. Currently, we work together in advertising, but he used to be a mascot. We talked about how he got into it, what he loved about it, and why he doesn't do it anymore. It was a great conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Here it is. Troy. Troy Huddleston. Tell me, uh, how did you first become a mascot? Okay, so back in like high school we had mascot auditions and i knew the guy who was the mascot we went to church together we were good friends i was like i love what this guy does i want to do that so sophomore year of high school we had auditions and i did not make it i was i wasn't first i wasn't even second and i wasn't even third i wasn't even the backup to the backup I was like halfway down the list of losers. What was the audition like though? What do you, what did you have to do? So through like, they put us in suit and in high school we had this big red Bronco and they put the head on us. They put the body suit on us and they, they, it was kind of like theater auditions where it was like, show this emotion, but you can't show emotion with face because your face is a single emotion all the time. And uh, I, I thought I did really good. Like I left that audition and I like called my mom and I was like, I'm going to be the mascot. Like for sure. I knew the guy who was there. He was going to put in a good word for me. He might have, but then like they came out with the results like a week later and they announced it on the intercom. They were like, your new mascot has been selected. And did you stand up like ready and ready to be? And then I like, I didn't hear my name and I was like, for real? <laughs> like I didn't. So I went a whole season and me and my brother, we were both like the spirit leaders for our high school. So, uh, we always dressed up in short shorts. We had the basketball tees, uh, or the basketball jerseys and we would go to every game. Like we didn't miss a single game because we wanted to be there. So we were, were already involved. I was in- already, yeah, I was already involved with the school. So people knew that this is what I did. This is what like me and my brother did. So did you bounce back? A year later, I went to the very first football game because I didn't hear anything about mascot tryouts. I knew the person probably just moved forward with it. One guy graduated and the guy under him would just take it over. So I was like, well, there's probably not a mascot. There was no mascot at that game. Not like no one showed up. So that opening game, there was no mascot. And I was like, man, where is the Bronco? And so the next day, well, that following Monday, I went to the spirit coordinator and I said, where was the Bronco? Why was the Bronco not at the game? And she was like, well, the guy who's doing it doesn't want to do it anymore. So, uh, do you want to do it? And I was like, for real? <laughs> like, you're just giving this to me. You're not even like going to make me audition or anything. So I did it. And then I pulled someone else in to kind of help me out. And me and him kind of like, did every appearance in high school, which appearances in high school were completely different from college and, uh, like professional. And so, uh, in what way? Like it was like a middle school assembly Oh, and yes. it was just like, Hey, go high five the kids and, and do this and do that. And I was like, okay, I got out of my first two hours of school. So I was like, heck yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> and then the football game, football game and basketball game, you had to have a mascot at every single one of those in, in uh, high school. So, junior year went the whole time perfect summer came and they were like do you want to do it again i was like of course i'm already invested uh so i did it the senior year but one of the guys that was doing it with me dropped out so i was doing it by myself and there's little amount of high school games and uh so I like, I kept trying to bring people in and I brought like three other people in to see if they would help me out and see if they would do it with me. And it, it, it just didn't work out like with you, like as other, like as like a backup. Okay. So, uh, so like if I could make a basketball game, I could call my backup or I could text him and I said like, Hey, I need you to do this back, this game for me as my backup. But you had to be at every game, but we had to be at every game. And so we got to ride on the cheerleader bus. <laughs> Nobody thought the the mascot was cool, so I was like, whatever. But you got to be there. Yeah. 
So how did it like progress through the years too? Like what were you learning while you were so, doing that, that first couple of years? Uh, I, I learned to be more like mimish, like uh, to talk with my hands, to interact with what I had. Cause I couldn't talk. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't take my head off. So if like, if I needed water, it was either I had a sign for water. Usually it's like American sign language for water, which you hold up three fingers and you hit your chin. So that's water. Um, and if like, if you needed a break, you'd just like do a hang loose. That was our sign in high school. And it like went with me through college. I was like, Hey, I need to go take a break. And then I also learned how to tumble in high school. Oh, cool. So flips and tricks and stuff like that. And I don't know, just, it taught me to be more creative with what I had because as a mascot, you have, you have what you have in front of you. And if you can't. If you can't use that, then you're not a good mascot. Because you you have to entertain, right? You're there to, to give some spirit. Your one goal is to entertain people as a mascot. It's not to watch the game. It's not to like hang out with your friends. It's to make sure the viewing experience of everyone in the stands are like they're hyped or they are just like they're you're the good. ultimate hype man. Yeah. And so that's how I became a mascot. I failed my first attempt and went from there that's great and i was i was I was like ready for some rocky story where you like trained for weeks to get back to it and they just gave it to you so how did that progress into college so in college i went to the university of oklahoma and i got accepted uh but i hadn't auditioned yet for the mascot role and how that worked was i emailed the spirit coordinator and i said hey here's the thing I want to be the mascot. What do I have to do? He said, Oh, well we got tryouts in like a few weeks. So just come up, you can do the tryout. If you're under 18, you'll have to have a signature. So I had to bring my mom with me cause I hadn't turned 18 yet. And I walked onto that mascot squad of eight people. And the tryout was very similar to how it was in, uh, in high school. It was, dressed you in the outfit and they said, all right, let's see what you can do. And so we went through like, cause different characters have different walks. Okay. So we went through boomer and sooners walk and they were like, okay, yeah, you can do that. Did and they then, show you that or you had to just like, no, they, they, they demonstrated it for us. They were just making sure that we could walk. Okay. And it was, it was very relaxed, which now it's a lot different of how people will try out. Uh, like once I left the program, we kind of, vamped it up a little bit so we just weren't bringing people on who could walk walk ons <laughs> yeah. we're bringing people who yeah. could walk yeah we I, we uh because when i when i uh, tried out we had three people try out they brought every single person on one of those guys ended up quitting halfway through the year but um it was very very relaxed there it's was a no, pretty small world too isn't it mm-hmm. there's so there's a group me of every mascot and it's got about like 600 people in it. And like, we, we all know each other and we all kind of like, we like, we still talk to each other. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. So how was it different in college though? Like after you got that, like talk about that experience, just being a college mascot. So it is completely different being a high school mascot than it is at college. Cause with college you have, practices every week you have meetings a different day that week and then in those meetings you schedule appearances for we would probably have like 30 to 40 appearances a week and our team of eight which then grew to like 12 the next year we had to make sure that there was a mascot at every basketball game every football game every community appearance every um wrestling duel every volleyball match every Jeez. we we sent a mascot to a swimming meet one time just because they requested him there and there's birthday parties there's weddings there's uh hey go out to this at&t store because they're a sponsor of us and help sell services to people so you got 12 people on a team because there's several people playing boomer and sooner at the same time like in different 
uh, different events sometimes. Yeah. Very rarely would we put the same mascot at two different events okay. at the same time. So like usually we stuck with, if there is a boomer at a volleyball game, there will never be a boomer at a peer, an appearance okay. at the same time. But if there's a boomer at a volleyball game and then the appearance is like 30 minutes later, then we can send someone to that appearance with the same outfit, the same uniform. And then once boomer is finished at the volleyball game, he leaves. And so like, cause social media is so like prevalent now that yeah. people know they're like, Oh, boomers at this volleyball game, but now he's at this place. So, so we it were, looks like just left one, went to the other. We were real smart with our, our planning or I like to think we were, but we could always have a boomer at one and a sooner at the other. And cause they're two different characters. Yeah. Uh, and it just, it just worked out. Um, and talk about like what the other roles are on the team. Like you have the, you have a mascot, but then you have a handler, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And are those the main two yeah. things? So when you're the, when you're, the mascot you're only the character you play that character you do nothing else like you don't get your own water you don't get your own like uh it's almost like a security guard for the mascot make sure kids aren't pulling on tails make sure kids aren't like punching the mascot kicking the mascot like as a hand i, I would say the handler is a more important position than the mascot itself because the mascot can just go off and do whatever it wants or he or she could like, just like, like, Hey, there's like something that I can go play with so I can go interact with it. And the handler has to make sure that they are by their side without being like too creepy at all times, just in case an emergency happens. And a lot of the times we would, uh, we wouldn't have enough handlers, uh, to go out with mascots. So if we trusted you, we would, we would throw a mascot out there without a handler and it would. It would it would work out pretty well i usually didn't go with a handler like my last two years at ou just because we didn't have enough and i didn't want to have to like drag someone else out there with me if i knew i could do it by myself yeah but it's more for like safety it's more for safety so like these first years we'll usually send out a a, a veteran or a third or fourth year with them so they know what to do they know how to get in suit they know how to just interact with kids like if they're doing something wrong then one of the veterans can come in and, and like help them out. And yeah. Well, walk me through like, let's say a football game. Like what does that entire day look like leading up to the game? And then like, what, what do you do during the game? So football games were the most fun, but they also took up the most time. We had to be at the stadium. Everyone had to be at the stadium who was scheduled that day four hours before kickoff. So that means if there's an 11 o'clock kickoff, we had to be there at 7 a.m. sharp or you didn't get to suit up. And then usually we only had one parking pass. So whoever the captain was would have to wrangle up the people who weren't living on campus. So then you had to get up at like five o'clock just to make sure you, you got to people's houses, pick them up, make sure they were there. You had to make sure that all of your suits were ready, all of your uniforms and all of your heads were groomed before getting to groom groomed, like brushing up and down the fur to make sure that it was soft and it looked good that you weren't showing up with like ratty hair. Cause nobody wants to touch a mascot. That's like gross looking. Yeah. Uh, so once we got to the stadium, we all walked in together. We all put our stuff down and almost immediately we had to be on the field within 20 minutes for photos with the junior uh, captain of the game. So each year they bring out this captain or each game they bring out this captain does the coin flip. Well, uh, they, they get to bring like their mom and dad or like their aunt and their uncle onto the field prior to the game, take pictures with the mascots, kind of throw the football around. And that was like about seven 20 in the morning. And then at 7.30, we had to be halfway across campus for a, like a rally. And then that usually went for an hour. And then we had to have another mascot during that same time at a different event on campus. So we, we split up our team. We would split up Team Boomer and Team Sooner. And usually it was 
two or three people would go to Boomer Bash, which is in the student union, and it's like a kind of pep rally. And then we would send the other half to Everest Center, which was a, like a huge spread of all these caterers that bring in free food for the people who pay for the wristband and entry. And we were there. And then Boomer would come from his appearance to Boomer Bash. And we would stay there until about maybe an hour and a half before kickoff. And then we would go back into the stadium, our entire team would go back into the stadium and we would, uh, we would get ready for opening kickoff and then the pregame, uh, stuff on the field. So that was usually like a 30 minute break. And then we had to me- immediately be back on the field until the end of the first half. So if, if you got scheduled, there's three schedulings. There's the prior to kickoff scheduling. There's the first half and then there's a the second half. So we, ha- we would use up six people every game day just because of, uh, like health things. Like you had to make sure that people were being safe because, uh, in hundred degree weather, this mascot suit is going to add on another 20 to 30 degrees of temperature. So you're, you're in a, a, a heat suit in like 130 degrees sweating. And then, uh, um, usually we had a lot of people pass out. Really? During these game days. Yeah. Cause is there anything you could do to avoid that? Like what's, what's going on inside that suit? So like I said, it's, it's, it's super hot. Um, and everybody asks, Oh, is it hot in there? <laughs> no, it's, it's perfect. It's the perfect degrees Fair right conditions. here. Oh, it's great. Oh, we had a lot of people ask us that. Is it, is, is there a fan in there? And like the handler would have to like bounce back with, Oh no, boomer. Like that's a horse. Like uh, how, perfect can there, answer. how can there be a, how can there be a fan in inside of a horse? But, uh, what were you, what were you asking about? Oh, just like what, what, what's it like in the suit? Oh, it's, it's hot. So I lost as a mascot, I lost 40 pounds in my first year. And I went from like, cause I was, I was bigger than I am now. I was about 250 pounds. And that first year I lost 40 pounds. So a Man. lot of, a lot of people were thinking that I was like really sick and I was like, no, I'm just You're basically I, in a sauna. I'm in a time. sauna almost three to four times a week. And then we have a football game. Uh, my parents actually got really worried about me. They were like, do we like, are you okay? Like, do we, do we need to like sit down and talk to you? And they were, I was like, no, I was just like, I'm, I'm just working out. It's, it's like a P90X or like a, uh, like a super big CrossFit workout every time you get into the suit because you're running around, you're sweating, you're just doing all this stuff. And is it heavy also? No. Well, some, well, it just depends on the suit. Like who, whoever makes the suit, uh, will depend on if it's heavy. So like pistol Pete, Oklahoma mm-hmm. state's mascot, they have a 60 pound head. Yeah. It looks heavy. It's made of, uh, fiberglass and it is 60 pounds. Imagine wearing that for an entire day. Insane. We're like boomer and sooners outfit. It wore, it was about like maybe on a good, like a good hot day. It would get up to about 20 pounds. Okay. And so it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It was boomer and sooners, uh, uniforms are a lot better than like, like the Florida Gator. Uh, he's got a huge suit and it's, it's another one of those 40, 50 pounders. And they have to wear that every, like every time they get in suit. Is the head kind of resting on your shoulders though? Like how does it, how does the head fit on? So Boomer and Sooner's head was a lot different. It was imagine like a, a wrestling helmet that was attached on by a chin strap. And then there was foam above your head and on your, on the sides of your head that rested more on like your head, the top of your head. And then we had fur that came up from our, our chest that we would tuck underneath the head so okay. you wouldn't ski, you wouldn't see any skin. And it, it was, it was a lot better than most of everybody else in the, like really all the, yeah. Like, cause when we would go to mascot camps, uh, every summer people would be like, dude, this unit, like this head is awesome. Like it's so lightweight. It feels great. You can see through the mouth and the eyes. So a lot of heads will just have vision through the eyes. 
and you can't see down. So if you're walking downstairs in Boomer and Sooner, you can see perfectly fine. But like other heads, you have to like tilt your head all the way down just to look at the stairs. So you could kick some kid, you could, you could like in high school, I, I couldn't see down. I could only see straight and I kicked some kid so hard that like he fell down and I'm pretty sure he started bleeding. Oh man. And I ran in the suit. Yeah. I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> but like, cause, cause I did it after college too. I was a mascot after college and um yeah let's let's talk about that because um and we can circle back around too because i don't want to run out of time okay so uh i was a character performer for the oklahoma city dodgers and it was a muscly dog and and it was named bricks and in that suit i wished that i still had the suit from when i was in college because i couldn't breathe i had three holes that i could breathe out of and I tried so hard to like get them like, hey, we need a new head. Like I can't breathe in this suit. And we're doing, let's see, the season that I did it, it was 70 home games in Oklahoma in the heat. And were you there for the entire game? And I was there for the entire game. I did not have a backup for- The entire season? For the entire season. Wow. Yeah. And it wasn't as bad because like the bottom of the suit was just a pair of leggings and like baseball pants. But then you put on this diaper fur fest of just heat and, um, it was, it was bad. And then, and then I had to like breathe through these three holes and I was like, (sighs) every time I would do a skit, like I would have to go back downstairs, take the helmet off. And I was in, I was in like a decent shape because I was doing it every single day. So, and I just couldn't get accustomed to it. So I took some scissors, cut me a big hole right in the mouth. I was like, <laughs> Did like it if, help? I was like, if I'm going to be doing this, I'm, I need to breathe. That's crazy to me. You think like, cause that's a semi pro team, mm-hmm. but you would think at that level, like there's gotta be a better way. Is there not a better way? Like even are there pro mascots that have really great heads to work with? Yeah. Like a lot of, like a lot of the NFL teams and NBA teams, which is a, small small selection of people like it is very very hard to get into a position of like nfl nhl or nba is it because you once you get there you don't want to let it go like it's a good yes. job to have yeah like a lot of these people are making six figures worth of money and wow like a lot of people do it into their late 40s as a mascot like one of my one of my biggest mentors uh he he's about probably 45 He's still doing it. He's still getting out on the ice. Can you say what team? uh, He works for the Nashville Predators. Okay. Yeah. Man. Do you ever, do you still think about doing that? Would you ever want to, if like you had an opportunity right now to like go to a pro team? I've always called you up. I've always thought about it. I've, I've got a lot of people, a lot of friends of mine who are doing it high up. Like my mentor, a friend of mine lives in Japan. He, he picked up his life, moved it to Japan, and he uh, he works for a like the MLB of Japan as as one of he's he is the most recognized mascot in Japan right now. Wow! Yeah, and uh, he loves it, but he only gets to come home once a year. Uh, like he's coming home in the next few days, and uh, he has a month off. Just that's like that's how your work visa works in Japan. And so he'll be there or he'll be here for like December 25th or like January 25th. And then he's got to go back and it's that sacrifice to act, to be able to, to perform for a protein. Yeah. Like right now in my life right now, I would love to do it just because there's something about like making someone smile, making someone laugh as a, as a character that just, I don't know. It's, it's awesome. It's like, it's, it's same with like, um, uh, being a comedian and you hear people laughing at your jokes and you're like, this is why I do it. Yeah. But there's, there's no one like I'm too big for like a position like uh, rumble. They would have to redesign the suit, redesign the program, stuff like that. So I'm off that list anywhere. That's like my size. I would have to move to like Kansas city or 
closer to like the East coast or the West coast. So you'd have to change your life to, I would, to yeah. make it happen. Yeah. And so I love doing it, but I don't, I don't know if I would move just, just where I am right now in like, in my, in my life and, and like the situation that I'm in. Why'd you stop though? Cause we're, so we're working together now mm-hmm. advertising agency, yeah. but I think when you started, you said you were going to maybe, and maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I think you said you're still going to do some games or like you weren't completely quitting, but now you don't do it at all. Right. Yeah. I, I haven't done it since last season, last baseball season. And, uh, I don't know. I just, it was, so when I was doing it, I went to, I went to a job at eight o'clock not at I see like not not at where I am right now. So I went to that job from eight to five and immediately after five I ran over to the ballpark and from five thirty till usually eleven o'clock, could be later, could be twelve thirty. We had a game that lasted until one thirty in the morning just because of all the extra innings. And doing that like seventy one seventy one days out of my summer summer nights and then um there was also day appearances at elementary schools at food banks and stuff like that so i would have to take off work and i would have to drive there usually didn't get reimbursed for gas but a lot of programs are different like if you go up to like a a professional professional league that's your usually that's your one job that's what you do you you make you make appearance schedules and you go and do those, you do the games, that's it. And so it's a more b- balanced life. Financially, it was just like, is it worth it? it? It's, I was doing so much that I was like, I'm not really seeing a reward. So, yeah. so when I got to ICG, I was like, I don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> but like, I loved doing it, but I know like, it's just, just something that I did in the past now. So what do you miss most about it? So what I miss most about it is the, the interactions with people that I would get, like seeing kids smile. Uh, we would do this appearance every single year uh, for OU and it was like shop with a cop. And it was kind of like our giving day where the community of Moore would send out every one of their police officers and they would pick up these kids and they got to spend that entire day with that kid investing into their life. And like they take them to Target and they would buy them like whatever they want. Just like they said, get like a uh, like a shopping cart full of just like clothes or toys and stuff like that. And then uh, they brought out like they brought out oh you cheerleaders. They brought out us. Uh, like the thunder was there and all sorts of like smaller um, like community involvement people were there. But like just seeing these kids like get out of the cop car with this the biggest smile on their faces and just like walking to the target knowing that they're going to be able to get whatever they want and just being a part of that was just incredible just because i like giving back to my community and so so i would always schedule myself for that appearance and i was like sorry dudes this is my appearance if you want to wake up at seven o'clock on a saturday morning to go with me you can but like like but the, you were going to be there. I was like, I'm going to be there. If you want to come with us, that'd be perfectly fine. But I, I loved cool. doing that. And like sports games are cool. Like football games. I went to uh, playoff games, uh, final four games. Like those were cool. But like they weren't as cool as seeing like a little child having his life changed. Um, and just being there and being yeah. present. More personal moments. Yes, yeah, it is. And so that's why I loved doing it. And that's why I came back and... Like I would always do that. You know what? We need to just get you a custom mascot suit. We'll decide. <laughs> we'll decide whatever it's going to be. And we'll just go out. Yeah. We can go out to the park. Is that creepy? If you say you're with somebody. <laughs> that is very creepy. <laughs> but if you have a t-shirt on that says like big brothers, big sisters. Yeah. You could do whatever you want. See, I'll walk with you with that t-shirt on and then we'll look, <laughs> we'll look normal. Yeah. Um, tell me about, um, some of the things that really grind your gears things mm-hmm. that the, the misconceptions about uh mascots okay it is hot in there so there is a book written by the mascot from the new york mets and 
the title. I'm pretty sure it's the Mets mascot. He's retired. Like he's doing bigger and better things now, but his, his book title is called, is it hot in there? Just because no matter what, no matter where I was, what I was doing, I always got the question, is it hot in there? Like, and like, hopefully your assistant is standing there and like we, we trained our assistants. Like when I was captain for the two years, we told people if someone asks, is it hot in there? Just kind of say, Oh yeah. But we, we like to give boomer some water breaks every now and then. And they're like, but for real, is it hot in there? <laughs> they wanted an answer. They wanted an answer. And, and so eventually, like sometimes I would say, well, do you ever wear a sweater on a warm day? Is it hot in your sweater? And they're like, well, yeah. I was like, well, there you then go. It's hot in there. Uh, that, and like some of the worst things were like, you'd get sorority girls who had been like drinking all day and they would like try and stick their hand up into the mouth just to like, and they would like reach out, they would like grab the, the horse mouth and they'd like try and open it to see you to see like who was in the suit. And, uh, and so like sometimes you just have to like rip your head away just, <laughs> or like, shove and stuff like that were you supposed to remain anonymous for like college mascoting too you were supposed to uh i tried my hardest to but a lot of times you had to tell your professors like if you were going on a on a uh, trip with a team you would have to take a uh like a proper letter to them and say hey i'm part of the cheer squad and like oh what do you do i don't see you out there in a cheer uniform every week it's like well i'm the i'm the mascot <laughs> and they're like, you're the mascot. I'm like, keep it down, keep it down. <laughs> and but like, if stuff slipped like that, I'm I'm not gonna go out of my way. Some programs though, they will make a huge deal about who's in suit and who's not. Why is it such a big deal to remain anonymous? It's just been one of those like, one of those things that has just passed down by generation and generation. It probably started hundreds of years ago when they were like. Well, who's the mascot? It's a mystery. And it's just passed. It's just been passed on uh, through generations. Some it's more tradition than anything. It's, it's completely tradition tradition. Like the program at the university of Auburn will tell you straight to your face that Abby is a tiger. So Abby, their mascot is a tiger and nothing else. Even if like it's, it's a mascot. It's a tiger. <laughs> and they will like get in your face and be like, no, Obby is a tiger. But that's just how their program is. And that they're one of the best like collegiate programs in, in the world. Would people get upset if I decided to make an investigative documentary about who each mascot was? The only people that would be mad would be the mascot community. <laughs> and like a lot of the times they're like super chill. They're like, Oh, Am I going to be on TV? <laughs> yeah, because there was a series. I think we've talked about it. Yeah. The I don't remember what the name is, but they show. For, Unmasked. Is that what it is? Yeah. On Hulu? Yeah. It was, I thought it was pretty good because for me, having never been in that world, I thought it was fascinating to mm-hmm. see some more about that. And a lot of people got a lot of bad reputation for doing that documentary. Oh. But they were like, they're like, it was a really good documentary because it actually showed outsiders just a weird word to say non mascots what it really is like uh to to do that and a lot of people hated it i enjoyed it i was like this was pretty good like i thought it was well made it is it's very well made and it was nice to see this like especially the there was the semi pro guy um struggling to to become pro Mm -hmm. and like how hard he worked at it and like it wasn't just a, a job for him it i mean it was cool to see that stuff mm-hmm. and a high yeah. school kid that just like yeah. wanted to get out there and, and be involved. Like it's great to see yeah. like all aspects and pretty much every part of that was, was real mascot life and, and whoever, whoever did that did a really good job. So kudos to them. I know who the director is. never met him, but he made this other um, short film years prior to that. That was about um, a Foley artist named Nancy Ancy Ancy. Nancy Ann C Ancy. Wow. Should look it up. 
uh, it's totally off topic, but uh, the same director and like I've uh, followed him ever since then yeah. because of that. It's like a mo- it's a mockumentary. It's about pretty good. Foley artistry. Yeah. Um, give me like a favorite memory because we are. Let's see, we're at five minutes. So okay. Give me give me one of your best memories from the like it can be from high school, it can be college, whatever. So my favorite memory, and I like this is the memory that I will remember most from being a mascot. So a uh, couple years ago, Brad Paisley wanted to film a music video. If you haven't seen it, it's called country nation. It's got a ton of mascots. It's got like 40 mascots from 40 different schools. So he flew us out to knock or to Knoxville. He paid for our flights. He paid for it. Like it was a true music video production. And that's kind of like where I fell in love with like the whole like music video and like, film stuff so it was pretty cool and he flew us out there we did the music video it was a hit and a few months later they were like hey we want to fly out the same guys from each university to be on stage at the cmas for That's crazy for like in in front of live television and they were like our spirit coordinator was like hey they already have everything on file for you. We're just going to send you out because like you had to pay for like your luggage and like your food and stuff. And like they knew like that, like I was working so I could, I could like pay for it and Mm -hmm. then I would get reimbursed once I get back. So we're, we're on stage. We had to wait like four hours in this like green room and like all of my friends were there that like, I have like grown with like, grown as a mascot with like people from Alabama and uh, LSU are like big 12 schools. We're all good friends. Like we still contact each other and talk to them and they're all there and we do a run through the day before and then the day of like, they're like, all right, we're walking downstairs. There's going to be tons of famous people on each side of you. And they said, do not interact with them do not talk to them do not like do not even give them a high five or you will be kicked off of stage and you will not get to perform like for television and i was like are you kidding me if there's like my idol downstairs (laughs) i'm not just gonna be like well well so i we're walking downstairs and there's justin timberlake and i'm like wait a second greatest singer of all time. I'm about to walk by him and you're trying to tell me that I can't give him a high five. So we're walking, we're walking. I'm kind of towards the middle. So the people in charge aren't near me. I reach out my hand. Justin Timberlake gives me a high five. Coolest thing ever. (laughs) Did you ever have a moment where you go, I'm not going to do it. Or it was like, as soon as you saw him, you were like, I have to. I, I like, I thought about it for a second. I was like, I've told my mom, I've told my brothers like i'm gonna be on tv and if i don't if i'm not out there they're gonna be like dude what happened but then you would have had the greatest story of why you didn't get to be out and so i high five justin timberlake like i was in costume anyway so he just thinks it as he high-fived boomer but like i know i high five justin timberlake and then we got out on stage um we did the performance they had a close-up of boomer doing the robot and so like I have, I, we still have the DVR recording of that CMAs and I'll just sit there and watch it. Is sometimes. that something we could look up on YouTube? Uh, it's, it's not on YouTube anymore, but I have a recording of it on my phone. Okay. You need to put it on YouTube. So, uh, everyone can yeah. watch it now. And so, so I was, I was on the CMAs and like we got off stage and one of the first people sitting in the front rows, Taylor Swift. Did you high five her too? No, she was too far away, but I blew her a kiss. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> Did she see it? Uh, I don't know, but in my mind, I knew that I blew her a kiss. I can't wait till both of them hear this, and then they're gonna be like, "Yeah, I remember that." <laughs> and Justin Timberlake will be like, "I want to give him a real high five, like face to face, want to perform with him." The four years that I was at OU, like I, w- I would not like the memories that I made with those people, like are still like I still hang out with the people, I still talk to them daily. Uh, just because like you grow with them and you're it's it's like a team and it's once it's over it's sad but i wouldn't trade anything 
for those for those memories that I made with him. Is it something you would recommend to, uh, I don't know, somebody yeah. in high school? Yeah, if you're in high school and you're listening to this or and you're in college, you need to try out to be a mascot because you have so much freedom and nobody can, will, nobody will tell you no. For the four time, like the four years that I was there, I was told no once. For what, what was the thing? So at the Lloyd Noble Center, you couldn't bring in uh, skateboards to this like homecoming rally, but it was one of our teammates. And I was like, well, I'll just put the suit on and and go out there. And the lady, the lady in charge, she told me no. She was like, no, no skateboards. And he's like, like I, I'm supposed to be out there. So I took the skateboard, rode it around to a different entrance. And some guy was like, oh, Boomer, on a skateboard. <laughs> and I just rolled right into the Lloyd Noble Center. Oh, it's so weird. It's that, it's that easy once you have that suit yeah. on. So much freedom. It's also true of like cameras, right? You hold a camera and you just walk with a purpose. People are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come through, come through. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, our timer went off. Okay. Sad. That's so sad. I know. Well, you can come back and talk more mascoting or anything. I, really? Yeah. I always need to be recording episodes. Yeah. I'd love to. Okay. Well, uh, do you want to, do you want to plug anything? You want a uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat? Uh, you can just find me on Instagram at Troy Wayne Huddleston. I don't, I don't post, I didn't post anything about being a mascot on there just because in case people are looking for those pictures. Yeah. Just because like it was a secret and, uh, I never, well, there is one photo of my graduation where we got to wear, uh, our pants underneath our cap and gown. And so that's how people kind of knew at the very end of it. It's like the big reveal. That was the reveal. Well, you so, should post some photos now. Yeah, I think I might. It's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on and uh, we'll do this again soon. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. I want to say thank you to Troy for coming on the show. It was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed learning more about mascotting. If you guys have an idea for a future episode, let us know and we'll try to get that recorded in the near future. But until then, thanks for listening and I'll see you next week.